Okay, so we are doing the AP Bacterial Transformation Lab. Um, our students are all suited up in their amazing aprons. They've got everything ready to go. On the table, you see that we've got a Bunsen burner going to keep the pathogens down. They've got several plates. Okay, and I'm gonna show you what those are. And then this is their bacterial plate that they're gonna be dealing with. This was plated last night about 5.15. So you can see all the E. coli growth from that. So for this lab, students are gonna be using seven Petri dishes. Two of them are going to say LB can. Okay, so these Petri dishes have Luria broth as the nutrient auger in the bottom of them, and the antibiotic canamycin is, is put into those. So those have canamycin antibiotic. They're gonna get two that have LB amp, okay? And these also have Luria broth. LB is Luria broth, but they have the antibiotic ampicillin. So it's two different antibiotics. Okay, and then the last thing, they're gonna get three plates that are Luria broth only. Okay, so these are obviously no antibiotics in them. So it's gonna look like this, seven plates, two with ampicillin, two, or two with canamycin, two with ampicillin, that's antibiotics in the auger. And then these three have no antibiotics, they're Luria broth only. So I'll show you when they start to label them, um, what they're gonna look like but that's what they're dealing with as far as petri dishes. So part of the procedure is adding calcium chloride. You can see that these uh, gentlemen have calcium chloride, which comes in this little tube right here, calcium chloride. They keep it on ice. Let's put, are you still using it? Just kidding, they're still using it. They're adding it to their two transformation tubes. One's marked with a positive, one's marked with a negative. That's gonna be one with a plasmid, one without a plasmid. This side, they're starting to label their petri dishes. So you can see this group has their transformation tubes are ready to go. This is a nice setup, y'all. These are styrofoam cups of ice. So they've got their calcium chloride still on ice, but look at this. These two transformation tubes have positives. These have negatives because these two are gonna have plasmid added and these two are gonna have um, no plasmid added. So they're now going to scoop some bacteria off the Petri dish with these. These are disposable inoculating loops and everything is meant to be a one-time use, and then it goes into this awesome beaker of bleach. You can see we put matches in there after we lit the Bunsen burner. Um, but it's gonna be a one-time use to make sure that we don't contaminate anything. So I'm gonna give you a close-up. Look at all that bacteria. That's one I plated from the original culture, and now they're going to take some of that and put it into their transformation tubes. So here we go. So we've got the scraping of the awesome bacteria. Great technique there, Morgan. She's got bacteria. Now, it doesn't look like it on the loop, but there's a lot. They put that down into the transformation tube. They wiggle jiggle it, get it in there with the calcium chloride. Yep, very good. And then that loop goes in the bleach solution. And now, this is the fun part. Look what they're gonna do now. They're gonna pulsate, make sure that they kind of mix it up. There you go, mix it up. And that kind of distributes the bacteria into all the calcium chloride. Good job. And then that goes in the bleach solution and they've done that tube. So they're gonna do this to all four tubes, guys. There are four tubes, two that say negative, two that say positive. And they're doing the same like bacterial transfer to all four tubes with the calcium chloride. The only difference when they're done with this step is we're gonna put plasmids in two of the tubes. So it's gonna take them a minute, they're gonna finish all four. Yeah. All right, so their four tubes are done. They've got them ready to go. They added in a label. Look how smart they are. On their plus tubes, they added the P-can for that plasmid, and then they added the P-amp for this plasmid. So they're going to put 10 microliters of each plasmid into the tube using the fancy inoculating loop because the tip of the loop, if you dip it like you're going to blow bubbles, it gets a film on there, and that's equal to 10 microliters. All right, so here they go. So they are adding the plasmid. Check that out. See, there's very little in there. It almost looks like there's not enough for everybody, but oh. there is. It's okay. You just kind of spin it around. And then when you pull it out, is there like a little liquid bubble on there? No. Okay, try it again. Okay, so look at that, guys. That's 10 microliters in that loop, and they're gonna add that to their tube. That's the PKN plasmid. Putting it in the PKM vial. They twist it, so they're transferring plasmid to the bacteria. Do it a little bit more. 
just to make sure we got all that plasmid in there. So we're hoping, good job, that that bacteria will uptake the plasmid. So they're gonna do a little couple techniques where they're gonna heat shock it and you'll see that in a minute. So they're gonna repeat the process for the second plasmid. So that's the P-amp, they're doing the second tube. They added their 10 microliters of plasmid that has, it's dual coated. It's got resistance to ampicillin as well as the ability to glow in the dark. Okay, so now they have a 15 minute chill time if you guys saw in the procedure. So they're just gonna let their tubes chill on ice. This part is very particular because bacteria are sometimes ornery. I know that they don't have brains, but bacteria have to think that if they uptake the plasmid, it'll give them a benefit. So you have to kind of make their environment one that they think is not a desirable environment. So by putting them on ice right now, they're cooling them down because in just a second, they're gonna take them from this cold environment and they're gonna heat shock them, not like burn them up, but they're gonna heat shock them. Over here, we have hot water baths that are ready to go. We've been maintaining these uh, close to 42 degrees. You can see right now we're a little warm. We're almost at 50. So what we have to do is take a little bit of ice from the container and see if we can drop the temperature. But we won't, don't wanna drop it too much because then there's like this game we're playing of too high, too low. So we're just gonna add a little bit, see if we can get that down to 42 degrees when they're ready to come put them into this for heat shocking. So they are now going to heat shock these bad boys. So they have all four tubes in the hot water bath. It's maintained at 42 degrees Celsius. The idea of this is to heat shock the bacteria, which makes them think that going from a cold environment to a hot environment is unfavorable, and therefore they will benefit from taking up the plasmid. So um, that's what they're trying to do. Now they are shaking as they're doing this. You can see they're kind of, it's, it's helping to transfer the heat from around the outside to the solution on the inside. So can you imagine those little bacteria in there being like, ah, you take me from cold to warm. So that's what they're doing. Good job. So they're doing this for a 90 second time frame. And then what are you gonna do when you take them out of this, guys? Where are they going? Ice. Back straight to the ice. Reminds me of an athlete that comes out of practice and they're hot and they go right into the ice bath. Okay, so there, they're back on ice, all four tubes. They went from the heat to the ice. And how long do they stay like this? At least minutes. a minute. A minute, at least a minute. And then they're ready after that. Okay, so now they're ready to add the Luria broth. Luria broth is a nutrient um, and it's a liquid in that tube you can see across the table. And so they're going to add 250, is that what it is, y'all? Yeah. 250 microliters. That's that little weird symbol you see on the pipette. They're not milliliters, they're microliters. So Chet Theria is going to do a nice measuring with that pipette. Very good. Look how good that technique is. Okay, that's what 250 microliters looks like. And then transfer to the tube, giving them a little nutrient. There you go. Taking care not to touch the side of the tube, putting it right in the bottom. Good job. That gives them a little bit of food. Then Morgan's shaking the tube up a little bit and they will do this to all four tubes. So this is their second tube, adding the 250 microliters of Luria broth. Shaking it up. Putting the lid and then they'll put them, they're putting them in their um, rack until they're ready to pour on the plates. So that's two out of four. I Okay, so now they have three out of the four tubes. They have one left, and then they'll be ready to plate their bacteria. There's the fourth one. Yeah. Hope this provides the virtual kids with at least part of this experience. <laughs> Sorry y'all couldn't be here Sadly. to do this fun lab. And they're all four tubes, so the next part is the best part. So they're lining their plates up. Remember, we have seven plates. Okay, so good job. They put all their LB plates in one row. You guys can see that. So the LB negative, they have way down there. And then this is an LB and an LB. One has positive. They're going to put the tube that has the ampicillin and pea green resistance in it. This one's going to be the canamycin resistance in it. So that's going to be the no plasmids. So that's what the negatives mean and then turn those upside down too. Let's just see, let's just show them. Okay, this one is their um, plate that has the ampicillin antibiotic in the auger. That one has ampicillin antibiotic in the auger. So they're gonna add some of the plasmid tube into this one, not in that one. 
And then there are the canamycins. They've got two of those. Okay, so they've got all seven lined up and they're ready now to transfer. Okay, so they're adding, there we go. Look at that beautiful, you guys can see that. That was 100 microliters that they're adding to their Petri dish. Is this the one without a plasmid? Yes. This is no plasmid. Don't flip it over yet, buddy, put it, put it back. Okay, so they're gonna add to the next one. You can see it's just adding 100 microliters to the auger side, and they're gonna leave them sit on the table. So ideally they're transferring bacteria onto that auger. This side of the table, they're doing uh, the ones with the plasmids. They're doing the same thing. They're adding 100 to each of their Petri dishes. Micro microliter. Get it like this. There you go. Perfect. Um, now the fun part. Can you open the lid? So this is what it looks like when you add the beads. They're adding four to six beads right into the solution. These are glass beads. Kind of cool. Aren't they bouncy? It's kind of fun. <laughs> Bounces on the auger. They put the <laughs> lid on, and then you can see like Caleb is doing right here. It's like one of those yeah, games where you tilt, effective. tilt and roll, tilt and roll, and it's spreading all the bacteria on the surface of the auger. Mm -hmm. Look at this awesome spreading technique. Bead spread, spread the bacteria all over the surface. Okay, so now they take all the glass beads, they dump them in the excess glass beads cup. They lid their Petri dishes. They're marking them with their period and table number. So we know who's or who's in the incubator. <laughs> They're women in STEM at this table. <laughs> <laughs> okay, glass beads. So there's all the glass beads that are used. Nasty, I'm gonna put those in bleach. Now they're gonna take all seven of these beautiful Petri dishes and they're gonna put them in the incubator. I'll show you guys where that is because my other table has already put theirs in. Check this incubator out. And you can see there's their stack. And then they're gonna put theirs next to that. And we're gonna maintain this incubator at 37 degrees. Right now it's a little cool because I opened it up, but it'll get back there in just a second. All right, so there you go. They're in the incubator. Now they're gonna clean up.